There's, of course, economic concerns, uh, not only with the price of oil, with the stock market, which has opened up uh, significantly lower today, but the $350 billion fund that is meant to help struggling small businesses uh, that have been hit by COVID-19, Anne-Marie, that fund has run out of cash. Funds from the Paycheck Protection Program were exhausted in less than two weeks, and there are now questions about where the money went. The CARES Act allowed businesses, regardless of size, to apply for loans, but it appears in this case size did matter. Stephen Gandell is here to break it all down. He's a reporter with CBS Money Watch. Uh, let's begin with this. Uh, which businesses were approved for the first round of loans? About 1.6 million businesses were approved. The average loan size was 200,000. But the issue that's been frustrating uh, first with this program was that it was supposed to be, it was met, it was sent as first come first serve. So there was no real government oversight and said, hey, you know, where we need it most, that's where this money is going. No, it was whoever showed up for the first in the door. And that meant companies with more resources were able to get there. And also Texas ended up getting a lot of money, even though there's been a relatively few cases there. New York got the fourth amount of funds, even though it has well more cases than others. Other uh, frustrating things were like construction got a lot of money, even though in many states, only six states, construction's been uh, uh, shut down. Other places, it's considered essential. So it's not clear the aid went to where it was supposed to because of this first come, first serve. Then secondly, the thing that's frustrating people now is that it appears that it, when it got to the banks, it wasn't first come, first serve. Many of the banks, and there are a number of lawsuits against the big banks, say that the banks put their biggest clients first so they could maximize their profits off of this program. So that was actually going to be the question that I wanted to ask you. You know, the banks have really sort of been blamed for this, but is it only the, the bank's fault? I, I mean, a part of the argument for banks and pre-existing relationships is, you know, there's a risk for them in loaning money. They have to know that they're going to get that money back. So does, does the blame land in the laps of the banks? So I don't think it's a credit issue, right? Because the government's fully backing these loans, and they're getting they're getting an interest mm. rate. In fact, they, they raise the interest rate. They make banks interest, uh, more interested in, in making these loans. The issue is is that government really outsourced its policy making responsibilities to the banks, and then in part to these small businesses, right? Because these small businesses are supposed to spend the money on payroll, but they don't necessarily. It's not clear that they actually will spend the money on payroll. So. I do think, and I've talked to a few different people about this, a few different people who are angry about uh, some borrowers who didn't get approved for loans, small businesses, uh, some policymakers. And what they say is that, yes, you can be uh, upset with the banks, but you should be also upset with Washington that outsourced its policymaking responsibilities to the banks, which, you know, they, they don't have that responsibility and, and maybe they didn't make the best decisions for all of us. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah. Let me ask you about uh, companies like Shake Shack and Ruth Chris's Steakhouse that were approved so quickly uh, for some loans. Uh, when these loans were actually meant for small businesses, now, as we reported yesterday, uh, Shake Shack gave back uh, the money that they received for f from the PPP uh, program, uh, but other large chain restaurants have not. And so what? explain to our audience why that may have happened. I know that Shake Shack in a statement said that uh, the rules regarding who's eligible for this money and who is not was very confusing, um, that they ended up going by the number of people that they have in their physical locations, which ended up being lower than the number of, of employees the government said you needed to have to be eligible for the program. Right. So the program was is a small business relief act to keep people employed. And it was directed towards companies with 500 employees or less. But they carved up a number of exceptions into the rules, specifically by industry. And one of the biggest exceptions was carved into the rule was for hotels and restaurants. And they said, as long as you don't have 500 people at any one location, you could apply for the loans. And they still supposedly maxed the, the lending out at $10 billion. But the Ruth Chris ended up applying twice and getting $20 billion. So there were the biggest exception, of course, here was restaurants. But there are other companies that you wouldn't think of as small businesses. Um, 70 publicly traded companies 
including one publicly traded company that is in the, the cruise line business. So it's definitely going to be hit. But it got a loan from Citibank and it has a hundred million dollars in cash in the bank. Besides outside of the PPP money, before it applied, it had a hundred million dollars in, 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 in the bank. And so you wouldn't think of that as a small business or a company that should be tapping a fund that's meant for mom and pop businesses, local restaurants that don't have access to uh, large capital markets. So now the government, Congress, is looking to sort of refund this pot of money. What do we know about the deal that's being hammered out now? We're looking at about $300 billion more for this fund. Uh, the initial estimates for what it might need to fund all of the requests we get, I've got from an, a professor uh, from the Chicago Booth School of Business. He said it's $720 billion. Now, that was based on companies with 500 employees or less and the, and the hotel industry, but uh, hotel and restaurants. But it's clear now that there are more loopholes even than that than we expect. So, so I think that number to, to meet all the people who want money from this fund, I think it's probably north of 700. And the banks are already saying that the amount of applicants they have in line, people who were not able, who were shut out of this first round, they say, think this new money, even $300 billion, it could go within two days. Oh, my goodness. Looks like we'll be talking to you again about this, Stephen. Stephen Gendel, thank you so much. Thanks for having me on.